Hey, what's up guys? Brian here, Brian's All Maintenance. Hope you guys are doing well. Kind of a balmy, cold Michigan morning. I uh, got a lot on the books today. Here's what we got. I'm dropping off the Vertex right now here at Weingarts. From there, I have to head over to Carlton, Michigan to go uh, get my other mower out of our enclosed trailer. So do me a solid, watch this video all the way through because there's some stuff that I want to share about uh, buying your first trailer, your second trailer, stuff that maybe is common sense, but might save somebody out there two, three, four grand. Um, talking about axles, talking about uh, longevity of a trailer, a little this, little that, and uh, maybe a little bit of a buying guide for you guys, all right? So uh, that being said, we're gonna hop into it here. Uh, we got the Vertex up here. That way I didn't have to travel, you know, uh, two hours on the road, hour there, hour back. Carrying an extra 900 pounds, drop this off, go get the Laser Z, bring that thing back, hit up Weingarts. I got a one o'clock with the guys. Uh, we're gonna do a little two hour lunch powwow which will be really exciting. Looks like we're gonna be starting cleanups next week. So, out of the uh, frying pan and into the fire, right? Here we go. you bro you uh you good here we're all good hey thanks man no appreciate you all right man make it look good yeah sounds good thanks. Said about a couple hours later you'll be up uh probably like two hours yeah i'm gonna be quick so thanks brother appreciate it all right all right so my boy pat up here and brad they always take care of me the whole team takes care of me they take care of you guys too man they're awesome but <sighs> It's just one of those days we're trying to get a bunch of stuff done. We got rain coming in Thursday, Friday. Uh, so trying to get a bunch of this stuff done now. And uh, you know, some of you guys are already out there mowing, man. We're like one week away and it doesn't matter how much you prep. There's always like little stuff that you guys still get done. <laughs> All right guys, well really quickly here, I'm back over at Kelly and Son's trailer. Well, I wouldn't say back over. You guys probably didn't notice that or see that because I didn't film last time I was here because it was 19 degrees and blowing cold snow. So really quickly here, uh, I want to just kind of throw up on you guys for just a quick minute. This might be a detail for some of you guys. This might be a solid learning lesson for some of you guys as well. So you guys know we've got the enclosed trailer. This is a eight and a half by 16 sure track, uh, solid trailer. I love it. It's been just uh, the jam for us, right? Um, here's where I'm at right now. And here's the kind of the issue. I need some new axles. Uh, right off the rip, <clears throat> long story short, about 2300 bucks, parts, labor, the whole deal. Now, I know some of you guys have been with me for a minute, you're like, this sounds familiar, didn't we just put new axles on here? Well, yes, we put new axles on in 2019, that was four years ago, and here's the long story short. What we did here is we ordered the 7K axle trailer in 2016, it came in in 2017. Now, at the time, the size of my business, we were rocking one mower, I was a big one mower guy. Um, we had the zero down, downtime sticker with uh, Weingart, so there was no real reason to have more than one mower. We weren't doing a crap ton of business. We were doing 100, 150,000 in revenue. Uh, business was still kind of small. I had that red F-150, and uh, I wouldn't have probably really been able to pull that 10K axle trailer. So at the time, this was like that next sweet uh, step, the next baby step up for us, right? Well, what happened along the way is, as we're starting to rock two mowers in here, if you guys do some simple math with me, you got a zero turn that's 1,500 pounds, a stand down mower that's 1,000 pounds, a bagger that's 500 pounds, all this other stuff combined, the dry weight of the trailer alone is, <clears throat> the dry weight of the trailer alone is another three, 4,000 pounds. Uh, the guys went and waited at a way station just down the road and we're at 6,000 pounds with one mower in there. If we add the stand down mower, that's 7,000 pounds, which is at capacity. Uh, with this trailer. So, by the way, <clears throat> we've tried to put two mowers in here with two baggers. We've like jammed all the mowers in there with like a stand on leaf blower, fuel, you know, loading up 12 gallons of fuel on the uh, Z, 
eight gallons of fuel or whatever on the Vertex, five gallons, five gallons on the Sure Cans, two and a half, two and a half. Your fuel adds a lot of weight too. The long story short, and here's the quick learning lesson is, we've overloaded this trailer clearly years on end, right? Not only the first axles, but the second axles. So now I'm stuck between a rock and a hard place. And this is just real life, man. I don't know. Like I, I try to show the good, the bad, and the ugly. This is kind of the uh, the rough. <laughs> is I, I'm stuck between a rock and a hard place between, do I just slap on new 3,500 pound axles? <clears throat> That's going to be 2,300 bucks. Do I slap on 5,200 pound axles? Uh, you can retro, from what I understand, retro uh, grade or retro upgrade the 5,200 pounds on here, but everything is designed for 3,500 pounds. So the framing, the uh, the tubes, whatever, all that other stuff, right? So I could slap on 5,200 pound axles, but what I've come to learn is that I need new wheels and tires and, you know, potentially some suspension work. So now we're in the, you know, four or five grand range. <clears throat> Not good, as you guys can tell. And then alternatively, do I just buy a new trailer? Well, uh, they've got a bunch of landscape pros out front, which is the trailer of choice. I mean, everybody I know locally, every big company, every small company, once you get a couple of bucks coming in, gets a landscape pro. That's just the Cadillac trailer for uh, SureTrack. So quick little interjection here. This trailer tire, from what I understand, is actually kind of bowed in. And on the other side, it's the back left, which is also kind of bowed in. And one of these is like completely bald, he was saying. This one is right here, it's completely bald. So not only do we need the new axles, I need a new rear left tire, obviously. So it is good to have professionals look at your equipment. That way you know things are being maintained correctly. Because otherwise, I would have just said, oh, things look good. Let's rock and roll to the next season. This is why you pay somebody a couple hundred bucks to look over your equipment once or twice a year. All right? So I'm not totally uh, interested in dropping 14,000 bucks on another trailer when this one is still decent, right? Like I can still get another couple years out of this. If we start a second crew, we could still rock this mower, or I'm sorry, this trailer with a, a stand on mower or a Z in there or whatever, it doesn't matter what mower. Um, and then I got 1,600 to 2,000 bucks in vinyl, right, for the wrap and the signage. So do I really wanna drop 15, 16 grand you know, going into the spring rush on a new trailer. Not really, especially when we're building the house and building the barn. Like, this is the year to not necessarily buy a bunch of new stuff for the business, that we're not budgeted for that. Can we make it work? Sure. Can we pay cash for it? Praise the Lord. Sure. Do I want to? Absolutely not. So, uh, I did a trailer podcast episode. Here's the, one of the things I want to talk about. I did a podcast episode. I'll leave a link in the description down below. Is episode, I think, 152, talking about all things trailers. I talked about getting the bigger axles, talking about getting 18 feet, maybe instead of 16 feet. Just some of the mistakes that I made along the way and thinking, what do we always try to say? Begin with the end in mind. Like, where are we going to go? Okay, so all things being said, I wanna make sure that you guys avoid getting 3,500 pound axles if you're gonna be loading it up. Go for those 5,200 pound axles. 16 foot has been great for us. If I was gonna do it all over again, I'd probably go with an 18 footer. I think the number one uh, seller uh, Sue was saying inside just a minute ago is the 20 foot. So uh, no issue at all like with anything SureTrack sold me. That's not the conversation. Uh, I thought I began with the end in mind myself, but again, dude, like our business, gosh, when we're making YouTube videos, you guys might've saw that one where I was chalking out our mowers and stuff and I was inside that trailer in 2016, uh, spring of 2017. I didn't expect that things would grow to where they're at today. I, I knew we would grow and get bigger, but I didn't think we'd be hauling two mowers regularly or having multiple employees regularly. And you know what, that's okay. Like that's just a growing pain and it's not, nobody's wrong or bad or evil. It's just um, what you learned along the way. I had a little bit more foresight when I ordered this utility trailer. <clears throat> this is the ATV trailer, the uh, utility style. We got the ramps up there, uh, which is more for the four wheeler and a, maybe a Ranger and all that mess down the road one day or a tractor. But that's why we went with the heavier duty ramp gate, the 5K axles, um, the 18 foot length. I like, hey, I know this trailer is the most right choice for us moving forward. Now, again, maybe I'll make a video in five years and realize hindsight 2020, I should have went with the 20 or 22 or 24. Any which way, in the book that we did, zero to 100K, let me just put this down, this thing's heavy. In the book that we did, uh, zero to 100K, I talk a lot about trailers for like a whole chapter. On podcast episode 152, I talk about trailers not only this size, but of course the smaller trailers and the 7x16s and your 7x14s at length. Whoa, we don't want to lose the camera. 
that's a lot of money. Uh, we talked about trailers at length on that episode for about an hour, hour and 10 minutes. So a lot of words to say before you guys buy a trailer, do some homework, do some research, shoot me an email, whatever you guys need. I wanna make sure that I help you guys buy the right one and find the right one for your growing business, okay? Um, again, I bought a six by 12, did a great job, but I much rather would have went with a seven by 14. We still might would have that trailer today. All right, so uh, learn from my mistakes. Uh, we have had some successes, but the success has only come because we've made a bunch of mistakes too, right? <laughs> so that being said, uh, I gotta go get the Z out of the enclosed trailer. Uh, we're gonna go take that to Weingarts and uh, Pat and Brad are gonna knock that out and their whole team up there, which is great. By the way, Kelly and Sons, look at this truck. That's absolutely beautiful truck. I think this one is Ryan's truck. Or maybe this is Steve's truck, actually. So, any which way, uh, I'm hoping that helps you guys out. Just a quick little tip here, very um, timely video, especially if a lot of you guys are picking up trailers right now. Always get more trailer than you need. I promise you, you will grow into it. And trailers start getting pretty expensive once you start getting into the higher end ones, but go for the bigger axles, go for the extra two or four feet, go for the extra width. If you're looking at seven, I'm just telling you go eight and a half by 16, uh, or eight and a half wide, I should say, or bigger. Um, go with the bigger um, axles, go with the spare tire, go with the bigger ramp. Like this stuff will pay huge dividends for you guys. And I know it's like, Fuller, it's easy for you to say you're spending my money. Look, I'm telling you, I'm making mistakes that are costing me thousands of dollars. The first round of axles to get fixed was like 1500 bucks. Today's money, it's 2300 bucks four years later. That's not cheap. And uh, I don't want a $2,300 bill, you know, one week before we start, uh, you know, spring cleanups and mulch season, right? So it's the part of doing business. It's the cost of doing business. It is what it is. Um, let's try to end on a positive note. I'm going to go get the Z. We're going to go take it to Weingarts. Cost and mistakes to learn, but hopefully they pay you guys big dividends. If this stuff is helpful, hey, big thumbs up on the video. Uh, that's all I got. <laughs> And at the, like, I'm laughing on the outside, but on the inside, I'm like crying, right? Like one of those videos, but it's okay. Broken taillight, bumper, now this. I'm like, there's four or 5,000 bucks that we're just like not budgeting. Uh, just simple, stupid mistakes, right? That are totally avoidable. All right, let me throw the camera down. I'm gonna go get this mower and uh, we'll be on the road again. Well, that wasn't too bad. I just cleaned out all those uh, salt bags, the ice bags of uh, hot pink, if you guys uh, couldn't tell, obviously. And uh, the reason is because it's gonna rain the next two days. That'll give the truck the ability to uh, have that bed kind of wash out. And then uh, also, I'll probably go wash the truck here maybe Friday. Uh, Saturday is supposed to be a pretty decent day. 
in which way I got five minutes to get down the road, five minutes to go hang out with uh, Mark and Rob. So a little employee luncheon and uh, hang out with those guys. Let's keep it going. There you go, what up now? Uh, I'm gonna hold on to it if, if that's cool with you. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. All right, guys. Well, that's pretty much what I got for you on today's vlog. I'm going to button it up right here back at the house finally. And we've got a four o'clock that I got to take care of with uh, actually a banker for the pole barn. And then at five o'clock, we got a Zoom meeting with our builder to talk about the budget, which is really exciting. So actually, everything's going good. Knock on wood. Sorry if the house is a little bit of a mess back there, but any which way, this is just my quick little rant video just to tell you guys, listen to episode 152 if you guys are in the market for an enclosed trailer or utility trailer, really any trailer, now that I'm saying this out loud. It was a really solid podcast episode and uh, just long story short, spending some money that we didn't have to right now with this whole debacle from earlier this morning, uh, if I would have just had a little bit more perspective and thought a little bit more uh, long term. So in which way, appreciate you guys listening in. Just had a great lunch with the guys. Everything is going well. We can't wait to get out there next week, start spring cleanups, cats meowing, and uh, start making some money, including recouping the $2,300 for those new axles. So in which way, appreciate you guys listening in. Have a great day. We'll catch up with you guys here on the next vlog. Oh, hey, by the way, check out Building It Together, our second YouTube channel. New videos drop in. I think we got three or four new videos, and uh, I'll leave a link down below. Check that video out as well. Appreciate the guys uh, checking it out and uh, all the support. All right, see ya.